Is it just me? Or do normal people end up making copious notes on bits of paper with circles and arrows and usually a paragraph on the back of each one to be used as evidence against us? That's for the stand. I don't know what that's doing there. Um, oh, that was when I was working out with a HLT mash tun and boiler the actual pipes I was going to need and calculating how many cam locks I would need I'm not sure what that is that might be the bath oh no that's the stand as well I can go over the stand as well so uh, anyhow that's a cutting list that's for the stand what have we got left these two this is designing the control panel and I was torn because I don't know really whether I need a timer. Do we need a timer? I think if I was uh, slightly more professional in my attitude, I might use a timer. Um, I think a, a sort of like an on off um, clock timer switch so I could set the HLT going first thing in the morning might be a better idea, but it only takes an hour to warm up to strike temp. When, when it's full of nearly whatever billion litres of water. So I don't. So I'm going to go with this. This is my original one. And the idea, I mean, it was not my idea, obviously. It was copied from, uh, I'm not sure, someone like New to Homebrew Tom, something like that. Uh, so this is the idea for, and I will do a kind of circuit diagram can't believe I used to do all this sort of crap for a living, but not with, but, but, you know, um, brewing stuff with uh, entertainment, electronics. Ooh. Now, I didn't really know what sort of size control panel to make, but as it happens, as far as it goes, and I'm not sure why, there will be a reason. I just can't recall it right now. I have a number of pieces of plywood which are um, 400 mil wide, 40 centimil wide, centimeters, 40 centi grady liters wide. So this is six mil, this is 12 mil. Where's my little piece that I was using to, um, to test? I don't know, it's gone, hang on. I didn't think I was gonna find that, put it somewhere safe. Um, this is where I was testing these <laughs> hole saw because I'm making the control panel out of wood and there's a reason for that which will become apparent because I want to make it look kind of like old and aged and steampunk type thing. Um, but I will be using these standard off the shelf uh, lights, controls, switches etc. So as you can see there will be uh, a layout which I will then put onto here. I might print it out and then stick it on and then drill the holes and then unstick it. I don't know yet. But this is where I was working out the size of oh, because these are 21mm. Obviously, I've got 21mm hole saw. So I thought try 20 and then maybe file it out. Fuck that. Uh, uh, eventually I decided I'll go for 22 and there's a little bit of movement in there but and here's the thing well there's a little bit of movement for the light if we oh, if I could this is the um, control knob that's a nice snug fit so I think we're just gonna go with the 22 I can uh, imagine once I've put plonk some varnish on all this after it's done, I might need to then give it another bit of a sanding. But so that this 40 centimeters, 400 millimeters, <sighs> we have the start of a control panel, and it is going to be 40 millimeters, 400, 40 centimeters, 400 millimeters wide, because I have quite a lot of this. Uh, already cut so I can easily make a box 
Uh, I have the rest of the electricalonics over here, um, including free ink bird, uh, some little regulated 12 volt. <coughs> Well, these are actually LED drivers, but they're, they're 12 volt. Should I need it? These are my PC100s, which I got ages ago, and then um, tested all out with uh, <coughs> uh, the thermal wells. So these are all the various different switches, and then underneath here is a rather chunky, rather nice heat sink for the solid state relays and loads of various uh, heat transferring gunk uh, for the heat sinks to attach the heat sinks to here. So that's all the kind of like, mostly the control, the control panel components. I nearly didn't manage to say that properly. They go along with some of these like terminal bus bars, which are quite handy. I've got RCD, main RCD. Then we've got three uh, MCBs for the um, the elements, heating elements. So two for the boiler and one for the HLT. And then all of the pumps are going to be run. The pumps don't need to be run technically off of relays, but it's probably good practice to do so. So three pumps, three relays, and a spare and they're going to be running off the 6 amp MCB. So technically, with all that running, we do have far, far more than this um, uh, so this, this RCD will, will handle. However, um, we are within acceptable margins. It won't blow it, I hope. And finally, hang on, that's, not, that's the stuff from Brew Kick Tap. No, that's not it either. Why did I put? <sighs> Hang on. <sighs> Sometimes I really, really need a PA in here. These are going to be for the. These go to um, the elements, and then these will be on the back of the control panel. I'll show you better with something like this. This is the inlet power inlet so 32 amp inlet and then these are 16 amp outlets so what we will have are 16 amp sockets and that's a 32 amp inlet all of this will be on the back out of the way um, so completely modular everything can be undone put away that's the theory so soon I'll start building the bloody thing hmm Another day, another drawing. So this was the original kind of mucking around idea. So I translated that onto a free printout. Wasn't quite happy with that layout, so that was prototype number one. This was prototype number two. So these are the PIDs. This is a two-way switch for one or two of the elements. This is a switch for auto or manual on the pump. Actually, I don't know why I'm bothering to tell you all this, because that was version two. This is the final. So this is going to be a key switch for the system. This is the HLT heater, which will be run on the PID and can be turned on and off. The um, mash pump, so for the Herms, etc., and sparge, can either be auto, off, or on. And the two elements, one off or two, again controlled by the PID. Down here, and I've tried to keep this in, in line so that makes sense. This is the HLT pump, which we can have off or on. Purely manual, doesn't need to be automatic. It's mainly for kind of like research, uh, but also for probably topping up 
the uh, mash and for sparging with clean water. This is a temperature sensor for the output of the chiller and that's purely just to turn that display on and off. And here is the boil pump. Uh, again, not automatic, just off or on, uh, which then takes it from the boil kettle through the chiller and this is the output as it goes in so we know what pitching temp is. Now the only problem I've got, PID outputs I think are 12 volt. I'm wondering, let me just check, I'm not sure whether these are 12 volt relays. I need to just double check that, won't be a sec. Well that is bloody lucky. I thought I'd better double check that. Um, and they are, they will take 10 to 28 volt. So that's good. Um, I think we're good to go. I shall now uh, do a couple of test layouts and see what I does think. I'm not gonna get all the PIDs out, but this will give you an idea of how it will come together. Now, the only slight query I have, and I'll show you, is that once these are in, I think I'm going to need more distance between the holes so that you can see the writing properly. Although, this isn't the writing which is actually going to be on there. I'm going to print directly onto the wood. Talk about that later. But I think we're going to need, a, I think that's probably going to be all right on the PIDs. But I might make the gaps between the components just a little bit larger. I think it's coming on. Best laid plans. Never write final on something until you're sure it is. So um, there's not a huge difference, but enough difference. That makes sense. I think so. And get that away. So from there, I've actually added just a little bit more space so that we will have. Sorry, shadow. Um, we'll have a little bit it's just kind of like more aesthetics anyway but this isn't the the actual as i said text that's the term this isn't the text that we're going to have i'm happy with this now so if i can um lots to go in recycling I'm not actually, I'm going to reuse it rather than recycle it. So this is that and that. There you go. We've got the basics of a control panel, guys. Wow! That could almost confuse me with someone who knows what he's doing. Next, get some... Uh, <laughs> Get some holes cut out. Cut out the oils, innit? Aye. Right. Back soon. So I just stuck this down lightly with some uh, tape and marked with one of these, which you push it down, it clicks, makes a hole, and then drilled, uh, and then did little tacks in the corners of these and then cut it out. So holes for the switches and lights and these are for the pids. And this is the thing I really hate because I'm not very good at precision woodworking. And then you get little things like this that really piss me off. However, it might sound strange, but it doesn't particularly worry me at the moment. 
and you'll see why in a bit. So that's all the holes cut out ready and a little bit wonky. Yeah, it's not going to matter. Next, we start preparing the labels. A slight hiatus in the build in the proceedings as I had to nip into town and get some flowers because it's Charlotte's birthday tomorrow. I'm not sure about these big pink ones, I don't know if she'll like those, but I didn't want to say, but there's some purple ones in there. Anyway, back to the build. Now here's the next bit, which is about getting the labels on the switches and lights. And the way I did that was, I designed the words, designed the words, typed the words, and then in the graphics program, flipped it, mirror image, and printed it out on the backing paper from labels. So where you've got like address labels or whatever, when they are all used, I always keep the backing sheet. This is the sort of shiny backing sheet. And then print the reverse image onto the backing sheet. And you end up with, I'll just give you a quick demonstration, the ink printed onto the shiny side. Now, the shiny side doesn't like taking ink. So if you put that then down, and rub across and then move it away you get whoops <laughs> twat upside down you get the whatever words are written on there now these these aren't needed now because I have done these so I'll just show you again ba boom whoops ah. why don't I get a tripod one day if you'd have thought I'd have used a tripod, I mean, after all, it is my nickname. Um, so that's how we design the labels for the switches and then stick them onto here like this, which isn't too bad. The only one which was a bit buggered up was the boil, but that's okay. It won't matter because what I'm going to do next is artificially age this a little bit before varnishing it definitely need to have fire extinguishers to hand when doing this now that is how I age stuff using that and that Aldi yeah believe it or not superb little things is them. Next, a very, very fine piece of emery cloth. And I'll rub this off. And then I'll do that standard old fashioned aging thing of perhaps hitting it a few times with a hammer. No, I probably won't. Um, I'll give it all a good wipe down. Sorry, I'm casting shadows over everything. Give it a wipe down and then give it a coat of varnish and then that will be the um, front panel for the control panel done that's it now for well easily for today um, this is a polyurethane varnish and i was going to use a waterborne varnish but i just find this is more durable and hard wearing. So given that this is gonna get a bit of a bashing over, over time as it's used, I thought, give it some polyurethane. And uh, now that will take probably about a day to dry. And once dry, we will then sand it down lightly and give it another coat and then another coat and then another coat. But until then, I think it's time to wrap this up. So part one, Come on, get that right. I don't know, that might be. <laughs> Probably not. Probably not the thumbnail. But part one of the control panel build is now done.